I talk to people all the time. They always try to discredit that bubble championship. I feel like a lot of that has to do with LeBron hate, but Lakers mm-hmm. hate is kind of this perfect storm, <laughs> this perfect of, storm. of generational things <laughs> to hate on. Mm-hmm. But when you look back, what were your experiences like in the bubble? And, you know, you it won was, three chips. How does that ring compare to the other two in terms I, of difficulty? I, I always tell everybody it was the hardest one. Yes. It, it was the hardest one. By far. You hear that, people? <laughs> by far. You hear um, that, Jordan fans? <laughs> I, obviously, winning, um, you know, beating Miami after losing the year was tough. Being your first one in San Antonio. Uh, but we won 4 1. Playing in Toronto, winning outside of, you know, Spurs organization, it was not easy. I won 4 2. But just the mental and emotional strain of, no matter how nice the place is, even if you're, if you're this is a beautiful place. If you're here for 100 days yeah. and you can't leave, it's gonna it's gonna put a lot of strain on you emotionally and and mentally, you know. Um, and and we were playing. It wasn't like we had a bunch of days in between because you know you had to make sure you had games like every other day. So, um, but it, it was a lot, man. And I don't say have PTSD or anything like that. But, but when you bring up that bubble. I'm not the type of that I tell people this all. <laughs> I'm not the type of guy to give any money back. Mm-hmm. But if they try to bring up the idea of another bubble again, y'all can have that one, man. I'm, <laughs> Have you been able to go to Disney World? Obviously, you got nah, first nah. son on the way. Will you ever take him to Disney World? We're gonna or, wait some time, man. Or no, nah. wait some it time. It was that bad, like it was tough, man. And it was and it was a beautiful setup. I'm not gonna say you could fish. Guys can golf. You could walk around, but just being in the same space every day. So we were there. So some teams weren't there for that long. We were there for two two months before our families came in. Jul- yeah, July and August. They came in like Septemberish. We were there for another month and a half after. So about three. Almost 100 days. Um, you know, I didn't tell many people this, but like, it started getting weird, man. I started getting vertigo. Like, I didn't even know what the hell that was. People <laughs> didn't help you, like, getting dizzy. I'm like, what the hell is vertigo? And you get a slight case of that. And this was, like, toward the end of it, of course. Um, but, yeah, man, it just mentally and emotionally, it puts a lot on you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, as a hooper, you're used to, obviously, road trips, time away from your family. That shit is healthy because, yeah, you know, yeah. then you come back and it really strengthens that bond. Yeah. So you get two months, like literally no family, then family comes and y'all motherfuckers is here every single day. Oh, it's, it's, it's kind of, so I love my teammates. I love my guys. I love my family, I love my <laughs> wife. Um, and I love the Lakers organization. Um, and I had a chance actually to go back to the Lakers this past year when I got bought out from Houston. Um, but when I, and I love RP, Rob Palenka, mm-hmm. but when I got a chance to talk to R- RP on the phone, all I could think about was the bubble. And I was just like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> and, I, and it just really kind of push, pushed me away from like, I'm like, damn, I don't know if I can, can do this again. I just remember being there every day with these guys and being with RP every day. And I'm just like, you know, I love those guys, but it's just every day. I don't, I don't know if I want to be around him that much anymore. After leaving there, it's like, I, I love seeing Bron. I love seeing AD. We experienced something great. You know, I had Dwight with me when I came to Philly. But being back in that space with them again is going to bring back so much of <laughs> that time where it's going to be, I'm just I'm like, and not going to be in a good mental space there. I mean, like were there things that... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, and you say, Gil, you got a lovely house, but if they locked us in here for 100 days and I got to get my nose swabbed every morning to oh, be able to, yeah, to work yeah, with you, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm not yeah. with Gil like that. But for you, like, <laughs> did it kind of feel like AAU almost, but like a, in a sick, twisted, demented type of fashion? Yeah, like, even like worse, tournaments back even in the even day? Even AAU tournaments, you play a couple games, you leave on the road, you go yeah. somewhere. Um, it's maybe a week. <laughs> you know, yeah. you maximize that times 10. You, know, you, you even you go on vacations or road trips with your family. Yeah. You take them in doses. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, was, no, I love no. my, my family. I love my parents. I love my in-laws. But I only take them for about three or four days. Yeah. And then I'm good. But if I have to take if for even two weeks, I'm like, look, man, I might have to choke somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might be ready to at odds. You're at the point where nah, I'm not ever talking to this person again. Now, 100 days is, a, is, a, is another story. That's how I am with the pool. <laughs> what do you no, mean? So, no, I, I, I really get what you <laughs> So, you know, because of the knees, I had, uh, you know, three knee surgeries, you know, in 14 months. So I had a lot of, doing a lot of pool, mm-hmm. you know, rehabbing. Every time I look at the pool, all I can think of is the rehab inside that. So I won't even jump in You want to get in the shit. pool no more? <laughs> no, nah, I won't even jump. I look at it, keep it clean. It's been three years. Everybody it. else in the pool. Yeah, get in the pool. Nah, I'm like, good, man. The pool is not the same. I, it's not enjoyable. It was like work. As yeah. soon as I get in the water, it's like exercise. I'm good. Yeah. It's tough, man. <laughs> so one, three chips. I know everybody always asks you, what's your favorite one? Blah, blah, blah. We're not going to ask that shit. But you got three championship rings. Mm-hmm. Let's just say... 
worst case scenario, un- unfortunate events happen, and you need to pawn one of those rings. Which one of those rings? Gotta save one. How about that? Save yeah. one. You gotta, gotta save, save one. one. You gotta one. save. I wanna know which one's the best. Which one do you think you can make the most bread off if Ooh. you had to sling it? I could probably make the most off the Lakers one. Yeah, you know, um, somebody. And so that's probably the one you wanna keep. It, uh, San Antonio's a little older, so the, it's a nice ring. <laughs> But it's not as nice as the Toronto. It, the Toronto one is ridiculous. Okay. It's the biggest one. Toronto's, Toronto's the biggest, the biggest one. one. Toronto's the Ooh, biggest one. Ooh, okay. I wouldn't have guessed that. But here's the thing, though. If you sell the Lakers ring, a Lakers fan will buy it and just give it back to you because that, that's how they're... Possibly. That's how they're, possibly. You probably get the most money for it. You know, it's was, it was a bubble year. It's Kobe year. And, you know, Lakers fans, it's, it's a bigger, you know, fan base throughout the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, Can- Canadians are, are special, man. They treat you unbelievably. So it'd be between those two, but I'll, I'll probably keep the Toronto one and sell the LA one because I'll get the most for the LA one, and the Toronto one I think I don't say I like the most, but I think it's I wouldn't say more meaningful, it's just, but it's just like I'm for sure. yeah, you know.